I'm Nella from Winnipeg BJB and welcome to Ball Jointed Doll History. Um, since this is a video panel and not an in-person panel, um, I can't interact with you and ask questions about kind of everyone's backgrounds. If you're wondering um, about the state of kind of the ball jointed doll hobby, such as what the dolls are made of, um, why we get into the hobby, um, where you can buy and that sort of thing. There is a panel later this afternoon called Not Your Average Doll. It's also hosted by me, um, where I will be talking about all of those things. It's kind of a introduction to ball jointed dolls um, designed for people who haven't really seen them before or done much research into them. I am going to be on Discord all day, so if you have any questions, um, you can send me a message. You can also get in contact with me by email or by social media. So let's get into the history of ball jointed dolls. So this portion is called the Ball Jointed Dolls Before 1999, prior to the creation of the modern Ball Jointed Doll. So before we get into the past, we kind of need to address that term I just said, modern Ball Jointed Doll. What do I mean? I mean a doll with three main characteristics. One, a ball and socket articulation system. So every joint is a ball that connects with a socket. The second characteristic is that they are strung with elastic. That's the white stuff you see poking out through there. And the third and most important characteristic is that they are designed to be customized. While you can buy a doll that is complete exactly as you see in the photos, the usual route is to buy what is called a basic doll which has no eyebrows no lipstick here there's no paint on the face there's no clothes there's no hair and there might not even be eyes <laughs> so it's really a blank slate uh, for you to start and to customize so that's a modern ball jointed doll but those only came about when Volks released the first ones in February 28, on February 28, 1999. That does not mean that ball jointed dolls haven't been around before. Remember, I had to say modern ball jointed dolls. That's because there were ball jointed dolls in the 1900s, in the late 1800s. And the idea for them, or the idea that led to the ball joint, uh, ball and socket technology, actually predates even 1880. <laughs> so, to get to what led to ball jointed dolls, we have to go to Japan, which seems very appropriate for Icon. So in the late Edo period, which is the late 18th century, early 19th century, there were dolls called triple jointed Gosho dolls. And the Gosho dolls in, are just a general term for palace dolls. But the triple jointed ones were a bit more special than that they were designed to be redressed. That's already a change from uh, dolls prior to um, these palace, prior to the triple jointed palace dolls. They were actually designed to be redressed. Secondly, that triple jointing is amazing. I'm going to show you right now a picture of a really, a really amazing um, triple jointed Gosho doll. 
here it is closed and this doll is made out of wood the triple jointing though is this so the triple jointing as you saw in that photo um, was a joint at the hips, a joint at the knees and at the ankles. And then the calves kind of like folded up on uh, the thighs. This is so that the doll could stand because those legs could kind of lock together. They could sit, much like these two are doing right now, or they could kneel. Which, you have to admit, that's pretty cool. Another characteristic, in addition to that articulation, or that level of articulation that they share with the modern BJDs, is the anatomical correctness. Uh, modern BJDs are anatomically correct. So, the triple-jointed Gosho doll led to the antique, ball jointed dolls. So we're going to jump from Japan to France in 1867. So in 1858, no 1853, sorry, I just consulted my notes. 1853, Japan ended their isolationism. And in 1867, they attended L'Exposition Universelle at Paris. It was a world's fair with um, wares and new wares for sale and new technology on demonstration and a whole bunch of countries all trying to prove that they were the coolest, basically. Think the Olympics, but about arts and technology and culture, not sports. And it was also the very first time that Japan did one of these World Fair type events. Now, being that this was in Paris, the French doll company um, and doll makers, uh, Jumeau, were there. And they actually um, exhibited one of their dolls, which got a bronze award. But Interestingly, um, there's no mention really of the doll itself. It was all about the costume. Uh, was all of the praise was about the costume. <laughs> but we can't say definitively whether Jumeau went to the um, pavilion that the Japanese uh, delegation had put on. But in 1870, we know that Jumeau released his Bebe line, which were dun 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 ball jointed. Now, they're not as jointed as, say, these two are, which have a fairly basic um, amount of joints for a modern ball jointed doll. In fact, let's look at a picture of some of the Jumeau dolls. So you can see that there's typically no joint at the ankle. This is in contrast to the triple jointed dolls from Japan. But you will notice that that is definitively a ball joint. It's a ball and socket joint that is strung with elastic. However, unlike modern ball jointed dolls, they hadn't really thought of what happened when the elastic wore out and had to replace it which makes repairing antique uh, Jumeau Bebe dolls probably a fairly interesting task compared to the comparatively more straightforward way of restringing a modern ball jointed doll. From France, we are going to jump to Germany because as the French companies such as Jumeau were releasing these ball jointed dolls in the 1870s and 1880s, all the way up to the uh, 1900, through to the 1900s, and even the 1920s, really. Um, German doll companies got an idea. They went, hey, the Jumeau company has been hiring us to um, 
past parts of these dolls, why don't we start making our own? Antique ball jointed dolls, by the way. Um, in contrast to the triple jointed Gosho dolls, which were made out of wood, and also in contrast to the modern DJDs, which are made out of resin um, or other types of plastics, they were made out of porcelain for the head or bisque to be more specific, um, as there wasn't a glaze over top. And then the bodies were wood and composition, which is kind of like a mixture of sawdust and plaster to have an even coating over top of the wood so you wouldn't have splinters. <laughs> because no one wants splinters when you're playing with an amazing doll. I assume. I know I wouldn't want that. <laughs> we're actually going to stay in Germany because the next um, kind of step on our journey towards the modern ball jointed doll is in 1933 when German artist Hans Bellmer starts to create his own giant, and I'm talking giant, ball jointed doll for his art photography. The doll is made out of flax fiber, glue, has wooden dowels on the inside of the arms um, to strengthen them with like a wooden frame and glass eyes and a, a wig. Now I couldn't find out what material the wig was made out of so I don't know that part. <laughs> now I said that the doll is huge. Let me make sure that I have the exact measurement because I always say it wrong. The doll was just over 142 centimeters tall. That's 56 inches tall. This thing was huge. <laughs> um, his dolls were meant to be adolescent girls, but not normal adolescent girls. Um, Hans Balmer was a surrealist, which means that these photos are really really um, surreal and kind of disturbing. Um, I'm going to actually show some of the pictures on the screen but I um, know that I've chosen the least creepy <laughs> and also that he never had these dolls in clothes. Ever. So as you are seeing the photos of uh, his work in Let's continue to 1934, when Hans Bellmer um, photographs his dolls and privately publishes them as an anonymous book called Die Puppe, or The Doll. It's uh, of 10 black and white photos of the doll. Uh, these photos had also been given to a surrealist uh, magazine in France which led to him having some popularity in France. After 1934, he continued to photograph dolls, um, the dolls he had created, and um, release them as books. However, he was um, eventually um, had his art declared um, degenerate by the Nazis, and he fled to France, where he ended up um, being welcomed by the surrealist community there who had already admired his work in their magazines back in 1934. Now we're going to jump back to Japan and jump forward a couple of decades. So in 1965, uh, Simone Yotsuda learns about the works of Hans Bellmer thanks to a magazine. And he begins to create his own ball jointed dolls. Instead of them being kind of very surreal, they end up um, being very realistic. Um, there is still that element of surrealism, which you'll see in the photos that I'll show you of his work, um, but predominantly they look very lifelike. And unlike Hans Bellmer, um, they are often dis they are often photographed clothed, um, and they often have very detailed uh, faces. 
So in 1973, he has his first solo exhibition. And in March of 1978, he opens up the Ecole de Simon, a doll making school where basically he teaches other artists how to make dolls like he is. In 1981, uh, there's the first group exhibition for the Ecole de Simon. And in 1985, the first book of his works is published. So those are the first um, photographs um, and art books that are sold of his work. Simon Yotsuda, sorry, Simon Yotsuda, ended up inspiring a lot of other Japanese artists to start creating their own fine art dolls that were ball jointed. They're not classified as modern ball jointed dolls, according to our definition from the beginning, because they are not meant to be customized. One thing that they share in common with the dolls of Hans Belmer is their size. Um, that sort of life size or just under life size scale um, continues to be the size that these dolls are made at. Some other famous uh, Japanese uh, ball joint doll artists who do these fine art dolls. Um, there's a list of them, not all of whom attended uh, the Ecole de Simon. So let's look at some of their work. Um, I should, before we do the photos, I will warn you that once again, these are fine art dolls, so they continue with more of the surreal or vaguely unsettling um, side of things rather than the cutesy side. First off, we have Amano Katan. Then we have Ryo Yoshida, who actually made two books on how to make ball jointed dolls. Uh, these are used by people who are starting their first ball jointed dolls. Um, they're designed to be kind of the customizable type um, because he goes into detail about how to make the joints and that's really the hardest part. More recently we have Mari Shimizu, Shimizu who specializes in, as you can see, kind of um, dolls with hollowed out portions that then have a seam inside of them. Finishing off, we have Koitsuki, Koitsuki Hime. Um, that artist kind of, as you can see in these photos, um, does kind of, still that sort of unsettling, but it's almost in a dark fairy tale sort of way. Does that make sense? A dark fairy tale? <laughs> Please tell me you can see that. It's not just me. So you can actually buy out books um, with photographs of the dolls of all of those artists that I just named. Um, that's actually where most of those photographs come from. Uh, this kind of phenomenon of the Japanese fine out dolls, they're ball jointed and almost life size to actually life size. Lead, leads us to almost at, almost at these two, almost at the modern ball jointed doll because, let's stay in Japan, Volks gets on the scene and it, and the year is 1998. So in 1998, um, Mr. I'm looking at how you say the name precisely, Mr. Akihiro Enku who was a sculptor at the hobby shop slash um, hobby, I can't really say hobby shop, but um, co uh, hobby company, Volks. And he made a one of a kind ball jointed doll for his wife. Now, one of the executive directors, actually the wife of the CEO, uh, Mrs. Setsu Shigeta, I'm probably mispronouncing that. I've never heard her last name said. Um, proposed offering customizable resin dolls to a wider market. Basically, she saw the one of a kind doll that Mr. Enku had made for his wife and said, Can we make profit off that? 
And what do you know? The hobby is still going strong. Volks is still going strong. Even in 2021 now. So, yeah, I think that she made the right choice in asking, hey, can we do that? And that brings us to the creation of the modern ball jointed doll at the very first doll's party, February 28th, 1999. However, it wasn't these two that were launched that party, but that's in part two. So thanks for attending part one of BJD History. If you're interested in part two, so the actual beginnings of the modern ball jointed doll, stay tuned. If you had any questions about part one um, or any suggestions on flow or anything like that, please let me know via Discord, um, social media, or by email. And if you are interested in where um, the BJD hobby is now and the kind of things that we are able to do in 2021 with these dolls, please check out the introduction to Ball Jointed Doll panel that is this afternoon called Not Your Average Doll. And if you have any specific questions, just shoot me a message. I'm always willing to chat.